guys, it's Courtney. I'm here with a pretty quick and simple card using the Jill Girl stamp set by Picket Fence Studios. And like I said, we're gonna keep this pretty simple. I pretty much just wanted to stop by to announce the winner of the Trinity Stamps stamp set. So I'll get to that in a minute. We're gonna start off with the card. And I'm gonna be using my Misty here to stamp out my image just because it is a pretty large image and I've never stamped it before. So sometimes you don't always get a great impression the first time around. So I'm gonna be stamping with Blackout Ink by Ink on 3 onto a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I'm gonna end up using a die cut for this so it doesn't really matter too much about placement at this point. But I did have to definitely stamp this twice. It was okay, but I like a really crisp black image. So I went ahead and stamped that twice, just making sure that my paper was lined up the same exact way each time. And we'll move on to the Copic coloring. Going to start off with her hair. And I'm using my lightest color to start and just basically mapping out my darkest areas for her face, it will be underneath where her hair is kind of hanging over her face. Also, her scarf is kind of hanging over her chin or laying on top of her chin. So that would create a shadow as well. I'm going to go in with my darkest color and basically just go over those same areas that we had mapped out. I'm also putting two little curvy lines and Frankie's going to be in the video quite a lot today. Um, You'll see the camera bouncing around because he was very snuggly, and if he couldn't reach me to snuggle, he was snuggling the camera. So he was moving it around a lot, so I apologize up front. Um, but anyway, I put two little curvy lines where the shape of her nose would be, just to kind of bring that out a little bit. It will pretty much be blended out. It'll be really subtle once we get all done, but it will be there just to add a little bit of, of shape to her face. So going in with the two mid-tones, then back to the lightest color, I did bring in my R20 just to add a little bit of color to her cheeks, then brought back that E50 just to blend that cheek color out a little bit. Now for her hair, I'm going to do this a little bit different than I normally do. There is individual strands in this particular image. It's not it's it's different than most images that I color. So I'm not really worrying about my flicking. I'm not worrying about really any shadows except for where it's clear that one strand is laying underneath another. You'll, you may see me add the darkest color, but I am, like I always do, going in with my darkest color first, and I typically only do this for hair. So I am adding some darker areas to where her hair is parted on the top. And then, like I said, any obvious areas where there would be a shadow. And any place else, I'm just randomly picking areas to put my darkest color in. I don't have any rhyme or reason for this, but I just know that I want some contrast in the end. So I'm just picking some random spots. I'm moving over my camera a little bit so that he's not totally in the shot and that you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, but I'll have to keep doing that. So I'm moving on to my darkest mid-tone and I'm extending all of those areas out that we had created with the E59. Again, concentrating on some of the shadowed areas and other areas, I'm just kind of plopping in the color down, not being too concerned. I am adding this color or the mid-tone colors to other areas that I didn't necessarily add that darkest color to, just again, again, to get some variation in color. Going in with the E55, and I'm pretty much extending these areas out almost all the way. I'm leaving very little room for my lightest color because this is the highlight color and I don't wanna lighten up her hair too much. I want her to appear to have dark brown hair, so I wanna kind of preserve that, but even with dark brown hair, there would still be some highlights. So I'm gonna bring in my E53 and just touch up some of those areas, being careful not to necessarily go over the darker areas because I don't wanna pick up and move that color around. Now Frankie's deciding that he wants to sit on my lap, knock down the pen cap while he's at it. And he has his face, you guys can't see him, but he has his face all the way up trying to give me some snuggles. So here is where he's going to bump the camera again, 
because I wouldn't give him any snuggles. <laughs> so we're going to move on to her scarf. And for this one, I am going in with darkest color again because I'm using three colors that are very similar to one another. So I'm adding shading where her scarf is wrapped around her. So where one part of the scarf is wrapped around the other, if that makes sense to you guys. And also a little bit on either side of her because it would be wrapped around her therefore it would be more of a rounder object i'm also adding just a few little dots randomly just to kind of keep that texture that texture is already in the image itself so you don't necessarily need to do this but if you're doing something like a no line you may want to add even more texture to it so i'm blending that out with my mid-tone and then finally to my lightest color and i'm going to keep the same color combination out and i'm going to be coloring her mittens the same way this time i am going to start off with my lightest color because i need to map out these areas and in case i make a mistake it's much easier to cover up the lightest color than it is the darkest color so my shading for her mittens for her right one the one on the right side her left our right would be off to the left hand side but I'm leaving just a little bit of a highlight because I don't want two dark areas right next to one another also there's like a line that goes through her mittens I'm assuming this is just part of the decoration I guess so I'm gonna play on that and add a shadow underneath that as well also where her thumb is underneath the rest of the mitten and on either side of the part of the mitten for her wrist. For the other mitten, there would, there would be a shadow because that's behind the other one and also her thumb as well for that. Blending that out with the same mid-tone as I used for her scarf and then finally to that same lightest color just to kind of blend everything out. There will be a little bit of contrast, but quite honestly, there's not a whole lot of contrast in this entire card. I kept all of the colors pretty soft. And whenever you use softer colors, you're not gonna get as much contrast. You don't necessarily want too much contrast because that's gonna it's gonna darken everything up. So for her sweater, I'm going to use some E30 markers. And again, starting off with the lightest color, mapping out those darkest areas. They're gonna be on either on both of her sleeves because they're kind of behind the rest of her body. Also using those lines within the illustration on her sleeves to create a little bit of texture to her sleeves. There's also going to be a shadow underneath her, <laughs> there's Frankie, <laughs> underneath her scarf and around her little coffee mug. Going in with the darkest color, going over those same areas that we had mapped out with that lightest color. Then I will blend that out with the mid-tone, then back to the lightest color. Going to do the same thing for her mug too, and I'm using some E30s, but I'm just going to step it up a little bit. I'm going to skip out on that E30, and my lightest color will be the E31. My darkest will be the E37. My um, highlight for that will be in the center because this is a round object. I'll also be using some E20 markers just for the little bit of the cup that sticks out on the very top and the handle. So while I'm doing that, while you guys are watching that, I am randomly picking a winner for the Trinity Stamps, Mr. Snailman stamp set and the embellishments. So it looks like our random winner is Trisha Podmore, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but Trisha, if you don't already have it, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and leave out in my email address in the description, along with all the supplies and all the other links that you guys may need. Just make sure that you email me your information, any ad the address you want me to send it to, and I will try to get it out to you either tomorrow or Tuesday. And there will be more giveaways soon because i'm doing some major de-stashing of my craft room not just stamps but anything that i come across that i don't need so i know that i've been getting a lot of comments on my previous craft room tour video looking for those stamps in the cd cases 
they are all gone, guys. I split them up between 26 people. <laughs> so um, there was a lot of them there, but they are all gone. But there will be hopefully more to come soon. It's just a long process. I, I'm sure you guys are aware if you've ever reorganized your craft room, you're fully aware of what a project that can be, especially when you're crafting at the same time. <laughs> so I'm finishing up the coffee mug here. And I'm starting with my lightest color, going to the darkest, and then back to the lightest. I'm only using two colors here just because it's a really teeny tiny area. Only a little bit of this mug itself actually sticks out. So once my coloring was done, I'm going to go ahead and die cut this with a stitched oval die. And this is by MFT, and I believe this is discontinued. I wasn't able to find it on Simon's Stamp or MFT website, but I'm going to link to something that's very similar, just in case you wanted to check that out. Going to run that through my die cutting machine, and I'm going to bring out my E30 marker just to bring down the color of her sweater to make it look like it goes all the way down to the bottom of that oval. Going to put that aside and I have another piece of Nina Solar White here and this is also cut down to an A2 size card, um, but we're gonna die cut this as well. Using the Hexastar stencil by Neat and Tangled, we're using all different brands here. <laughs> and I'm going to tape the stencil down to my card panel here just to, so it doesn't move around and I tape it to the back so I don't have those lines where the tape is. Going to be using Distressed Oxide in the color Tattered Rose and this is the only color I'm using and I'm just doing just a little bit of ink blending around the edges. You're not going to see the middle so I'm just not even worrying about it. I wanted to pick a very soft color because we use the soft colors when we would Copic colored the girl. So keeping this a nice and subtle, just wanted a little bit something in the background. Going to carefully remove my stencil as well as my washi tape there. Then I'm using another MFT die here, and this is the diagonal stitched inside out something or other. I'll link that below too. This is still available, but I will definitely link it. Um, running that through with the largest one. And like I said, guys, this is pretty simple. All I'm going to do is adhere this all together. So I'm going to use my Tombow Mono Multi Glue to first adhere the main panel that we use the stencil on to my A2 size card base, just leaving a little frame around the outside of the card base itself. Then I'll use that same glue to adhere my oval down right down to the center. Again, covering up that blank area that I didn't bother to use that Distress Ink on. Then finally, I added a little bit of sparkle, and I'm using a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen, and this is the clear one. I'm just going to add a little bit of sparkle to her mittens and her scarf. And that is it. That's the card for today, guys. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Have a great day, and congratulations to Trisha. Bye. Thank you.